How's it going you guys? Michael Shamblum here with another Lightroom tutorial. I get asked a lot how I edit my drone photographs and so I thought it would be fun to just edit one with you guys. And um, this is a top-down photograph taken with the Phantom 4. Pretty sharp, pretty small file though because it is from the Phantom 4. So anyways, I guess let's just get started. Uh, the first thing I'm noticing about the file itself is I want to bring out a lot more drama, a lot more of the colors and vibrance. I probably want to darken the photo a little bit too. So going through, let's just change the white balance first. I'm going to start by adding some magenta into here. And bring in just a touch of blue. I'm going to bring down the exposure a touch because I'm noticing it's just a little bit overexposed. And what I really want to do here is, especially in the rock, I want to bring out a lot of the tonality of the rock. And right now it just looks a little bit washed out. By bringing down the highlights, we should see more of those tones. Maybe bring up the shadows a touch, bring up the blacks a touch. And then let's try something. Let's bring up the whites to bring in more contrast, but then bring down the exposure. Bring up the contrast a little bit more. Bring up the black slider. And it's all about balancing the tonalities of the shadows and highlights while still bringing in as much contrast as possible, or as much contrast as you'd like for your own photograph. I'm still thinking this is just a touch bright, so I'm going to take down the exposure even further. Okay, I think something like that is nice. With most of my tutorials and things, I don't really play with the clarity slider all that much. Uh, it's just not a slider I really like the aesthetic of. Uh, definitely going to bring out a little bit more of the vibrance and the saturation. And now that I'm doing that, I'm noticing... Well, let's see here. It still looks a little bit green to me. I wonder... If I bring in more of the magenta, is it going to make the rocks too magenta? That looks good for now. And then um, the HLS sliders. This is a panel that I use a lot. I really like the HLS sliders. It basically stands for Hue, Saturation, and Luminance. And it allows you to edit the uh, hue, saturation, or luminance of any color individually rather than the whole photo itself. So if we wanted to change the color of the green, we can do that uh, without affecting the water or the warm tones. We can change the luminance of different things without affecting other things. Um, so I think this will be a good panel to use for this photo just to kind of alter the colors a little bit. Go to this little icon here and scroll around the photo, it's going to show us, it's going to highlight the different color that we'll be affecting. So right here, we would be affecting mostly the oranges if we were to change the hue. So let's just crank this down and see what it does. All right, so that made our rocks pretty magenta and red. And then going this way, it makes our rocks pretty much green. And... Uh, I don't really want to make the rocks too magenta. I think something like that will work. Let's change the color of the water. So this is more of an aqua slash green. Uh, we could make it more green, or we could make it a little bit more blue. I kind of like the blue look a little bit more. So most of the blues are just in these shadow areas. I kind of want the blues to match the other colors in the water more. All right. 
saturation wise uh let's just play with these individually let's see what the red does all right so that's kind of only affecting certain areas in the rock We can bring up the saturation of the orange to bring more out in the rocks over here. The yellow mostly affects the trees and a little bit of the water. I'm going to go back and see what just the yellow slider does to this foliage. Kind of interesting look with all the foliage being a little bit more orange. I definitely don't want to crank it m more towards green because it kind of makes the foliage look a little bit too unrealistic. I think I'm going to go with more of an orangey look for the foliage. And then for luminance, we can see what this does. So if you wanted to really crank the brightness of the rocks or change it, you could do that. I kind of like that with the water being just a touch darker over there. And then I always bring in a little bit of sharpness, a little bit of noise reduction, and then I bring up the color noise to get rid of little patchy areas. Uh, I'm not sure if there's an actual profile for... Oh, yep, yeah, there it is. DJI Phantom 4. But anyways, it uh, looks like it's getting rid of our vignette when we do that. Although I kind of like the vignette. But let me show you guys a way how to uh, create your own vignette that you have more control over. If we go over here to the radial gradient and we just bring this from the center out and then bring down the exposure, we're actually creating our own vignette. And I like doing this more because then you can play with where the vignette actually is and you can change, um, you can pretty much affect any of these sliders and it will only change the masking around the radial gradient. But anyways, I do like doing this to bring a little bit more attention into the center of the photo and kind of darken the edges. Let's use a brush tool. I'm going to brush a little bit around different areas that I want to be a little bit more noticeable. I really like the shape of this pool right here, and I don't really need to brighten up the pool, but maybe the areas around the pool so that this, this shape is a little bit more noticeable. Brush around here, and then bring up the shadows, maybe a little bit of the exposure, just to make this shape more noticeable. So I just brushed on this little island here, take up the contrast, bring up the exposure on that. All right, so let's see what that looks like from the original. So here's our original raw file, and here is our finished edit. Yeah, just in general, I kind of like to treat drone photos as if they were any other photo taken with my camera. I sort of try and do the editing to where if I was mix and matching drone photos, aerial photos, and photos that I took with a tripod on the ground, they would all sort of fit together in the same portfolio. But you definitely have to be a little bit more careful with the files since they're you know, usually they don't have quite as much dynamic range or maybe there's a touch less sharpness than, you know, taking it with a high-end DSLR. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. I hope you learned something from this and uh, feel free to subscribe for more. Thanks so much.